Welcome to Radio Fixer's channel. Subscribe for upcoming videos. Welcome back. And this is part seven and final video uh, repairing the Zenit radio. And I want to really thank you for all the subscribers watching all these videos. Really, my goal is uh, to create these videos so a brand new person can use the information and be able to get into the hobby. It is really is a wonderful hobby and very rewarding uh, to bring back something that totally you know, dead back to life and sing again. I highly suggest to go back and watch the other part of this radio which we spent time to fix two large crack and bakelite and also repaired a missing a portion of the bakelite. We also start working on the chassis and installed a new uh, capacitor inside the filter capacitors. Coming up part 7, uh, we're going to discuss about how to make the missing knob for this radio and also we're going to reassemble this radio and test the radio. Hopefully you all enjoy this video. You all have a great day. Take care. And this is a quick update. A couple of my subscribers brought to my attention that I might not need the diode uh, because the tube voltage close to 120. So I went back to look at the schematic and I see they're right. You know, this is the first time I did not add the tubes. I was so involved in fixing this, I didn't do that. The best way is add the two receipts at 35 that's 35 volts so 35 here 50 12 12 and 12 if you add all together is about 121 volts uh, so again my apology i forgot to do that and i'm glad they brought that to my attention i'm going to go back and remove that diode because uh, this radio does not need the diode anyway hopefully this will help you all I want to wash the knobs. It's really dirty as you can see. And uh, I'm going to wash it with soap and see how dirty it is and polish it. The only thing is missing is one of this small knob for the clock. I hope I can find something like this. If I don't have it, then I have to make one. Uh, believe me, that's the last thing I wanted to make one of this small thing. But uh, let's see. We need to make uh, one of this knob for the clock. As you notice, I have two of them. The third one is missing. So I need to make at least, I want to make two more. Just have one as a backup. Then meanwhile, I was looking to see if any other radios need some more knob. One of my radio is three knobs are missing as well. You know, all the knobs are missing. I have this from, uh, you know, the similar a radio because they have two of them it's a different color uh, one of them has all the three and so i'm going to make all of them at the same time the reason i'm going to do that because you know for creating one of this at a time pour wait 24 hours to dry them wait another if i need at least six of them uh, so uh, it's best to mold it one time and then pour it one time for measurement it much easier and then hey you know it's going to be done so what i did i got a bottle here <clears throat> one of these like a vitamin bottle you know and uh, I cut the top off like that the bottom is off you know I cut that off the easier way usually get the marker get the marker you know you mark it around and then I use this tool to just go over it a little bit at a time to give it like a line for the cut and then after that of course you use one of this you know to cut it that way it comes pretty straight you know it's going to be uh, pretty easy so this side i cut it without marking it and it's not a straight so this is going to be the bottom you see set perfect here that's what i need all right so i'm going to install all those inside just want to show you a couple of tricks that i use hopefully this makes sense all right okay to make molds you need this 
Uh, this is a great company. You know that they have something called synthetic molding clay. It never dry. It's you know, always this. You know you can't actually shape it, so you need that. And you can use toothpick or cotton swab. I prefer use cotton swab. Uh, I cut the top bottom off, and this is going to be installed like this inside. It's fit perfect like that. And of course, this goes to the mold. I will show you. But before you do anything, you have to polish, clean all the knobs. Should be totally clean because remember, when you make a mold, if it's not clean, uh, that going to be duplicated. Also, when you use like any type of Carvax liquid, go ahead and polish them uh, uh, for two reasons. One, to get it as shiny as possible. Second, the mold that you're going to make is not going to stick to it. And so let me show you what I do with all those these things. Okay, first I got some of that clay. You know, you make it like a ball like this. Get one of the like a you know the lead for the yogurt whatever. Put this here, another lead over it. You want to flat this thing. If it gets under your nail, don't worry about it. You have a gloves if you prefer. I'm gonna flat this. I don't want it too flat, but you know it's just enough and it's very perfect. You see, I can squeeze this down. All right. Now what we're gonna do with this crazy thing? Use an up like this, right? For two reasons I'm using this. Two reasons. Because if I set all this like like that, when I pour the liquid, you know, it they might tilt. So then you just place them inside this. So that is the goal. Then if you look at this, I'm gonna press this down until it touched the clay right touch the clay right that see that way when I pour the mold is not going to fall because when you pour the mold you have to tell this then what you do you get this screw right over it press it all the way down all the way down see the okay can actually press that here to seal it so the liquid silicone does not come out sometimes people they use you know the hot glue so now we're going to mix the silicone rubber pour it inside here i'm going to use this product i bought this from amazon it's a part a and b the one to one ratio by weight so you need some type of scale so the first thing what you do you turn on of course the scale you want to measure this it itself is about 0.25 ohms so you press this to zero it out now Want to try this product? Make sure to cap, you know, put it in the right bottle. That's why they marked it. I'm going to use this first. So we're going to go at least halfway. And that's 1.30. We're going to zero it out again. Now we add the other <clears throat> one. Again, don't mix the lead. We're going to go 130. And put it very gentle. 120. And that's 1.30. Now we're going to mix this pretty well. You want it to be gentle. You don't want to go pretty fast because it's going to create bubble. And you do have enough time. So and read the instruction, the label in the back of the bottle. It will tell you how much time you have before it starts getting hard. So you want to go side like that. Make sure everything is mixed. If it doesn't mix correctly, it does not dry really well. See like that. Spend several minutes to make sure this is mixed. Take your time. Remember, you're not in a rush. This is the important part that you don't want to mess up. I want the silicone rubber covered all the knobs and hopefully have maybe a quarter of inch or so over the knob. All right, I'm stirring this about close to seven minutes or so. And then I'm going to let it sit for a little bit. If there's any bubble come to the surface, and see, actually, it's still coming to the surface. I don't know if you've seen it or not. 
So let it sit at least for a minute or so, get to the surface, see the bubbling. Then what you do, you tilt this a little bit like this, you pour just a little bit at a time inside, just a little bit at a time, one corner like that, and let it go down. Let's just start to see it a little bit at a time, trying to bring the camera this way so you see it. See like that. And let it just go all over. I think I have enough silicone rubber for this. That's good. So let's say if it goes over a quarter of inch over the knob, then you're in good shape. All right, this mold sitting for several hours, and when you touch it, it's totally hard. And I assume it's dry. It's pretty hard, as you can't tell. So let's take it out of this. We're going to take the clay out. You can reuse this clay. The good thing about again, this clay is reusable since it doesn't get dried up. Now we also want to remove this as well. All right, after removing all the clay, you know, make sure this is all clean like this. Remove all those uh, pieces, those pen that I have inside. As you see, this is pretty clean now. Now this is end of the mold. All right. And what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to use a mold release. Uh, this is you want to use this. If you don't, you pour more silicone over this because this is two parts and the silicone is going to stay together. So you want to rub this on top of this silicone before you pour the other one so they don't stick together. So they say you have to add at least uh, three times just on the silicone portion. So what you do, you use the paintbrush Set here and you just rub all over the mold and take your time because you don't you want to make sure to apply this everywhere because you don't want your mold stay together just a very thin layer so let's sit for a couple of minutes until dry repeat three times to ensure liquid coverage this is the two-part mold, so we're going to go through the same process again. All right, this is next day. I let this overnight to set, to cure. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the rubbing alcohol to release the mold. You know, we want to release it. As you see, there's a, other layers that I add last night. So you just go over it like that. All right, squeeze it like this a little bit. Now I'm going to press it down. As you see, by doing that, it's coming out. Make it much easier that rubbing our car to release it. Say it like that. All right. So here, remember we put that uh, mold release. This is the second layer, right? Like that. You see, it's coming out because of the mold release we put there. We want to be gentle with it. So like that. Okay, it came apart as you see. All right, with all those. And this is this is the mark that I made when we put it together. You know, you just line it up like that. All right. Let's see if this trick work or not. And this is a called two-part mold. We put this aside, of course. Now we want to take all those, you know, knobs out of here. Let's see if I sque squeeze it, it might not work. I might need to do a small cut, then take those out. So what you do, if I'm doing this under magnifying glass because they're so small. You actually make a cut right here from the end. Be very gentle with it. You don't want to hurt the part, right? Just a cut like that. Just one cut, okay? You do it in all of them. A press from the bottom and pull from the top. See like that? We popped out. 
Okay. We're going to pull the other two as well. See this? They call pan. Is a pan when I want to put everything together. And that is how it goes in. That's why you put some type of mark there. Is a pen that you know where actually they go. Usually, best put it two or three of them. But uh, I just used one. Okay, this is ready for resin we poured in it. All right, now we need to actually measure to see how much resin we need to make the cast of those knobs. What I did, I filled up this measuring cup. Uh, this picture shows is about 10, is right on the line of 10. I pour water in this. Then now I'm going to put the, all the knobs inside the water to see how much liquid I need. It went up to 15 now. So we really don't need that much resin. So that tells me how much resin I need to make. And these are also measuring by weight. So I need to use the scale. So we want to weigh this to see how much actually weight, right? Turn this on. You put the cup in the top with nothing inside. It's 0 0.05. You're going to put it to zero. And that is means already deduct the weight of the cup. Then you're going to start adding that one part at a time. Part A. You can make sure to mark everything because you don't want to use the wrong top. If you do that, uh, it's going to be a big mess, folks. So see, I park, mark everything. So you put this side. So we know we need 0 0.05, and I'm going to go make some more extra so I don't be short. Okay, that is 0.05. That's part B now. Okay. This batch, we're going to use the white dye. So I think one drop is fine. I'm going to add it to this. Then mix them. You want to mix it really well. You want to be gentle so it doesn't create any bubble, of course. All right. After you mix it pretty well, what you want to do, you want to fill up all those cavity. That's one. You remember I made it extra. It wasn't really that much. I didn't want to end up be short. So you fill it up like that. All right, you see I have some extra, which is not that much. Then you get the top. You remember your pen, I call it pen right here. I'm going to close this, it's really gentle. All right, now let it sit until it's totally dry. It might take a few hours. You're going to check it. Don't press it pretty hard. Just put it right there. It's just a little touch. You should be fine. This is next day. And pour the white. And I think I didn't mix them correctly. So what happened is uh, they came out pretty nice, but then very soft. So this didn't work. Then I used this black and four of them came out really well. I can use this. Last night, I was trying to make different color. Let's open it up. Just pull it like this. Then gently, see how that? Gently, you start pulling this out like that. So still, I need to make some more. You see, they all came up. All right. So there is a layer in the top. Like the other one, you see it? The extra one, that's layer. All right, this is how you demold it. You press the bottom like that, okay? Then you pull it out like this. They came out really nice. And this is for another clock radio that I have. All right, let's finish this. This is for the Zenith. So two of them for Zenith, two others for my other radio. So I'm gonna pick the best of this by my Zenith. And the way you Take it out of is pretty simple, of course. You just pull it off like that, like this, and you're done. See, that's a zenith, that's an arrow on it. You know, the interesting thing is, you see, the zenith, the original, I didn't polish it. You see, I didn't polish it, just cleaned it, 
and it turned exactly like that. You see, it's exactly like this. See that? No polish. And I forgot to polish them. So the other one, which I actually polished, see, it's polished. And see that? That is very polished too. Both of them, see? So that is why you polish your knobs before you make a mold. Again, this is a great example between the here between these two. See that? So anyway, you when you make a mold, it will give you exactly what your original part is. If it's important to you, polish it. Then when you make a mold, it comes exactly like as shiny as your part. Depends what type of look you want to get. Old look or clean look, right? Hopefully this makes sense. Chassis already installed this in the back. I find some type of fabric. Usually this fabric goes under the couch. It's very thin and uh, but you know it's exactly like your original one. I mean the same type of design. So I cut some of those pieces out and put it glued. You know, you just use a spray glue on one side and install it. So that's already done. See that's not look nice. Alright, let's put the clock in. Oh one thing I forgot. You don't put the cover in first. The cover goes after everything is installed. I forgot about that. It really goes in this way. Alright, like that. See the little cut? See that cut? My spring goes right there. Okay, this went in. All right, now it fit perfect. All right, set so now. Let's put this. Okay, the goal is to send it through those. Let's put the washer and the nuts in. That's the last one. Okay, I got it. Finally, the clock is in. Now put the chassis in, and so let's put these two unit together. I want to make sure they go through. I put a little hole here so this comes out like that. All right. Uh, now let's put the screw in the bottom. There are two screws that goes there right here. I taped here because I didn't want the information already to get damaged. Meanwhile, I was working on it. I mass taped it. So let's take it out. Let's see everything is in good condition because I taped it. All right. The other screw goes right here. When you put this thing together, don't make them too tight. It's going to crack a bunch of radios that have cracks on it because where you put them together, they made them so tight. That's the tool I want to use. All right. We just need to solder these wires together, and this is for the back antenna. I put the back again, put the knobs, those things in, and then we test it. It's getting close, folks. All right. As you notice, I didn't change these wires because if I have to take this out out again, yeah, the only thing I need to unsolder right here, and uh, so in a state. You know, you can take just the clock by itself or the radio, not both of them anymore. You know, that makes sense or not. Twist these wires. Okay. Of course, gray, gray, brown, brown, black, black. But to do that, I'm going to make you like a pigtail coil. Okay, some type of coil I'll show you. I have all these thin wires, you know, and usually what I do, I take the insulation out of them, then they use the wire to make a coil. And so let's do that. My plan is to put this together like that, put a coil over it, and solder the coil area. I don't want to twist it other way, I want to make it straight like this, all right? So that is the goal. 
So you need a tool like this to take the take the installation out like that. Let's just take this out like that to see. That's the wire. So I'm thinking if we put this together, the thickness should be about that. Yeah, so the coil, and the, the, I want to make one coil to see if it fit or not. So what you do, you just hold this like that. You just go turn, uh, several turn. All right. Okay. I'm going to cut the extra off. And this is a test to see if I need uh, the thickness is fine or not. So I'm going to cut this off right here. Okay, see? Then I'm going to bend this. So I don't want to be sharp. Why I don't want to be sharp? Because I don't want, you know, it goes through the heat shrink that I'm going to put it there for protective wires. Okay? It should be a little gap. Not that much. See that? That's what you do. Now let's see if this is the right, maybe I need a larger one, I don't know. I got the heat shrink tubing, you know, I cut three, three of them. So first I want to put this inside like that, all the way goes through. You don't want to be close because the heat's going to shrink it. This goes right here, over, like that. Okay. The other one goes... It will perfect. See? Like this. Now I'm going to solder this. Do it one wire at a time. So you want to heat this up and add solder to it. You want to melt this, go over the coil, and that's why there's a space in the coil. So you go all the wire and join those two wires together. Okay? Okay, it's getting cold now. They go this right over it. It's better way to let it get colder, otherwise it's gonna shrink so fast. Okay. And then you get the lighter like that. Alright, see? So I'm gonna do the same thing the other two. All these three are finished. As you can see right here, they're all done. Let's install this. This is the back of the radio, of course, with the antenna here. When I was taking it apart, I mark here and I wrote top on it. So I know this being soldered to the top and the other one going to be in the bottom. So let's do that as well. This is soldered right here. And the way they did it, there is no hole here. So they just, they just bend this. That's the way it was, like that. It was like this. Let's solder this one too. That should do. Okay, that's done as well. I just noticed when I take this stuff out of the bag that there are two screws here, like this. So I start looking inside. I see there is one, there is one there and one there that's going to hook up the speaker to the chassis. So this is what I did. Let's see. I'm glad I saw that. Okay, that's it. Again, you don't want to make them too tight. See, this thing has a magnet in it. So I put a little paper towel at the inside. So it just sits like that, so it'd be easier to fit it inside the, the tough area to get to. All right, those two screws are in. Put the back panel. Believe it or not, this is one of the only radio that I still have these pens. Okay. Okay, folks, this radio is completely done. As you see, the clock is working. The radio is very, very quiet. Yeah, so that is fixed. I already started the radio, you know, turn it on. 
and it takes uh, you know a little bit to warm up now let's adjust the volume Come by change the station it's picking up many a station it's with people who are motivated their motivation is not to do what's right you got to disassociate yourself and her particular peculiar outlook on this issue so i'm afraid you're wrong in transferring that somehow into my saying or making assumptions because they help save people money geico yeah they were our team sponsor geico. see the sound is unbelievable you 15 so i can keep both of them then yeah oh yeah you can keep both of them for your 10 okay. percent yeah okay. yeah that's fine but i need her to know i want to tell me i said tell me about yourself as you see he's picking up tons of a station Unfortunately, we cannot turn it to the music station due to YouTube. Let's check it around already. See, it freaked this side. It was just unbelievable. Remember, the piece was missing. And this is, of course, is a back of the radio. Okay, folks, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's rescue all radios that need lots of work. You take care and have an awesome day. Bye. I want to take the opportunity and thank you for taking your valuable time watching these videos. If you're interested to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel and you will be notified when a new video being uploaded. You have a great day.